Well, hello, we're back. Hello. It is me, Robin, and my colleague Kev, and we're off to Fisherfield for a three, four day hike, taking in a few more nose and corbett. We left Edinburgh at two o'clock. It's now 20 past seven, and we stopped in Aviemore for a chippy. And I'll give you a wee pro tip. If you're wanting to stop in Aviemore for a chippy, avoid all the high street ones and go into the Dalfaber estate. A cracky chippy hidden in there. That's where all the locals go, so there's a bit of insider information. The fish supper was very crispy and it was magic. Perfecto. Anyway, we're going to get some clomers under our belt. I'll bring you back. Pull her on. So that's just been going uh, just over an hour now. We've got to the top of the pass, and uh, this is where it starts to get a bit more interesting. So we've got Anchalik there, and we've got our first glimpse into Fisher Field there and then you've got the Fanix over here and you've got the Ben Jerig for actually there's six Munros in there because you've got the Shona Vray and the other ones So we're not going to Chenneville Boffy tonight what we've done is the track forks away from Chenneville and this is where we're going those trees down there we're going to get pitched somewhere in there for the night and that leaves us in a nice position to blast up the first objective which is this corbett here and for the life of me I don't know how to pronounce it so I'm not even going to attempt but the plan is, is we're going to do four of the six of the big of the big six route and it's fairly ambitious but we want to camp on Ben Jerig Moor tomorrow so it's a big route but that's the plan so the path it comes down here and double backs on itself so we checked the map, we got past these crags and we just thought we just fired right down here instead Cut a bit of the angle And this is where we are There's a couple of pictures around here but we're going to see if we can get something a bit closer to the river But this is nice, I like it It's a nice spot and it's got us right below the corbett we want tomorrow So we're having a, a little fire on the riverbed so um, in the morning we'll clear up the rocks and when the river's next in spate I'll we'll just wash it all away Keeping the midges at bay at least. Therapeutic. Good morning, campers. Oh. Despite having to wear a midget net for the night. I actually got a really good sleep. It's six o'clock, so we're going to get ready and get this uh, hill walk started so we, we can get to our next point. It has to be a summit camp tonight, though. Because I tell you what, I don't know what to sleep with a midget net on my face again. And my tent's hooching me different bugs. Got spiders, midges, ticks. Daddy long legs, loads of wee things kicking about. <laughs> so that's us on the go. And we were just camped in those trees there. This is where we're going. Picking up this ridge here, up onto the shoulder, and up to the summit. It's about four kilometres away from where we were camped. Got fairly heavy packs. My base weight is seven and a half kilograms, and there's four kilograms of food. And I'm carrying about a kilogram of water at any one time So that's what, about 12 and a half It's not too bad, it's quite respectable actually For a 3-4 day hike I think Kev's pack's similar So we're going to avoid the, the craggy scrambly bit there There's a little grassy rake that diagonally goes up behind those crags So we're going to pick that up And then up onto the ridge And along to the summit Should be there in within an hour this is this little grassy rake, it just and then up there 
round the back of those crags. Hopefully my microphone can pick that up, but there's two ptarmigan talking to each other and uh, I think they may be nesting around here, so I've got to watch my foot in. There's one there. It's sitting dead still, I'm going to get the camera out and see if I can is zoom in. Is that a ptarmigan or is that a rock? Could just be a rock. Oh no, its head's moved. Gonna fly, you gonna fly? There she goes. I love time again. That was a nice wildlife encounter. Quite enjoyed that. They're lovely birds. But here's a wee random fact for you. Ptarmigans are called snow chickens in America. <laughs> Typical Americans always simplify it. Snow chickens, brilliant. But they're fantastic little birds, hardy. I like grouse with attitudes because they're obviously of the same family but very rarely seen below 600 metres and uh, their feet are insulated with feathers for the snow, the snow months and obviously they get their winter plumage so they blend in. Beautiful birds. Hey, it's Tammy the ptarmigan again. That's a terrible impression. That's us up onto the ridge now. We're at an altitude of 800 metres, so there's just over 100 metres of ascent to go and we're on the first top. That beauty there is obviously on Chalk. This bad boy here, that's our target for tonight, a summit camp up there, but it's a big day. It doesn't look far, but we've got to go way back on ourselves and then come back over here. So uh, we might end up camping down at that lock-in there. But we'll see where we end up. Here we are, this is the demoted Munro. It's been reclassified as a Corbett and this happened about five, six years ago. A lot of people miss it out now, which is a shame because it's, it's part of the classic big six route. It's looking good though. It's a little bit hazy, but all the tops are out. So that is Skur Ban, and that's our first Munro of the day. Seems a long way away. Got to get over this little bump, and then up that horrendous boulder field. It's famous for that. I'm at the lowest point now, before we start heading up uh, Skur Ban, and I reckon this lock-in is probably our last chance to get water right over the next three Munros. So we're going to cash in our chips, pick up some aqua here. Uh, it's just deciding how much to take, I reckon a litre and a half. So there's no doubt about it, boulder fields definitely slow you down, but you've just got to take your time. If you're after any advice, always aim for the bigger boulders, because the smaller ones tend to move under your feet. And try and plan a step ahead. Trekking poles can be a pain because they get jarred and caught and they slow you down and they just become a hindrance. We've got a bit to go. Way up there, 
about 300 meters of ascent. This is my home for the night. It's rather cosy. Oh, just as well I'm skinny. This boulder field goes on and on. <laughs> Hundred meters to go, so it's not too bad. I'm starting to hallucinate. I'm seeing dolphins' faces in the rocks and everything. And look at this. You see a wee man's face there. There's eyes, nose, mouth, chin, forehead. Just me then, I thought so. <laughs> right, let's get this last hundred meters out of the way. Yes! That deserves a victory summit dance. If you're wondering if I set up the GoPro walk back to record this, I don't. I've actually got a pet raven. It sets up for me, so it's all ready. Give me a kid. What's the time, Kev? Rap o'clock. Rap o'clock. That's what time is. You'd be correct, sir. So this here is our next Munro That is Mullock Corrie Vic Ferker Pronounced something like that That's Munro number 3 in front of Kevin And that's Ben Tarson And it's got the famous Tennis coat And I'll show you that later on Well This ascent isn't too dissimilar to the Ring of Steel when we were going up on Bodak a few weeks ago It's that sort of loose, gravelly, bouldery path but it zigzags up so it's not too bad oh, Nearly there Yay. You can just see over to Torridon now and there's Sleok. Let's have a look. Not too shabby. Boom. There we go. Now's not a point to get OCD and start asking yourself, did I switch off the gas hob? Did I lock the car? because <laughs> you're miles away So if you like boulder fields you've come to the right place because there's another one here So there's Ben Tarson. Thankfully you don't have to do this little bump here. There is a bypass path that snakes around and then up. So it's all good. Ah, it's, uh, it's three o'clock now, so it's taken a bit longer than expected. I think I underestimated Fisher Field a wee bit, which is stupid because I've been here and done it before. But you kind of forget. Looks easy on the map, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> This is us skirting underneath that top
What a view, wow. There's the tennis court. Andy Murray should invite Novak Djokovic up for a game. That's if uh, Andy Murray's hip can, can take it right enough. <laughs> Whoever knocks the ball over has to get it though. Hitters get us. I had a friend at work, he said, if you always shout, hello the hills, somebody will answer back. So here goes, hello the hills! Nah. He must have been up Shihalian every weekend. So this is the little scramble coming up to the tennis court. One, two, three, here! Oh. And Robin Wallace is about to take his place on the centre court. He waves to the crowd, the crowd go mental. Yes. And here's Robin Wallace's opponent coming. It is none other than Kevin Russell. Russell, Russell Vision. Here he comes. He's got his tennis rackets. Oh no, they're not. They're trekking poles. Did you scramble? I did. And he's on centre court as well. The crowd go nuts for Kev. <laughs> New balls, please. So you can see there how much the slants down. Still pretty cool feature though. So there's our path there. Skirts away from this ridge and down towards the bottom of a vagin. I've managed to find a, a fresh source of water. This is the first water I've collected for a while. This is on the the path on the way down off the get a wee bee off the ridge there. I think the plumber needs to sort the pressure though. Ribbit, ribbit. So it's nearly half six. We came all the way down there. Oh, it was a tough descent. Anyway, we're starting to see some pictures appear, so we're going to scope out this first. There's a bigger grassy patch over there. Uh, see where we can find. Kevin's down his rock sack. It looks like he's found somewhere. What have you got, Kev? It's alright here, eh? Alright, it's not a summit camp, but... I've had worse. Lovely jubbly. It's such a good feeling once you've got the tent up, like, you just relax for the night. We've seen this grass patch for way, way up there. We kind of thought, ah, that, that could be a plan. So dinner for tonight, I've got a choice because obviously I've got three meals. I've got chicken tikka with rice, pasta bolognese, and salmon and broccoli pasta. Guess which one I'm going to have, and if you get it wrong, you have to donate a fiver to Mount Rescue. So, salmon and broccoli pasta, pasta bolognese, and chicken tikka rice. Pick one now. Right, I'll pick one. I'm going to go... What's got the most calories? Pasta bolognese has got the most, most calories, so that's what I'm going with. Did you get it right? No? Yes? No? That's a fiver to Mount Rescue if you got it wrong.
<laughs> I thought you said it was warm, it's freezing. <laughs> <laughs> that was earlier, man. <laughs> the sun was still out. Oh, no, I can't. Good for your feet, man. Oh. Honestly, see when we first arrived here and pitched, it was just a nice gentle breeze. A nice easterly coming up, no midges. And that breeze has just disappeared and... Ah, you guessed it. Like central. <clears throat> oh man, we should be up in the summit, look at that. 